Dungeon Masters, I got a beef to pick with you. I've got some things that we do as Dungeon Masters that we need to stop doing right now, but the question is, what are those things and why do we do them? So here are the five things I want to tell you that as a Dungeon Master, you should no longer be doing at all. There is no reason for it. If you're doing them, you're playing the game wrong. So Dungeon Masters, stop rolling for skill checks if a skill check cannot be won. This is one of the biggest things I see Dungeon Masters doing where a player says, I want to roll to seduce the dragon, tell the king not to be king. We all have heard the stories. Now the thing is, is that if a player rolls and they roll that natural 20, as a Dungeon Master, what's your caveat? How are you going to make that a win for the party? And so what I tell people is this, if a skill check cannot be won, then don't have them roll. Now. If the players roll a natural 20, there is an out that you have as a dungeon master. You can have some level of success. And this comes in the form of gaining influence with that individual. If the players are asking for something that's absolutely so ridiculous, treat it as such. Meaning if the players are saying, hey, king, you should hand us the, 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 the crown and we should rule your kingdom. And that's what they do. And they roll a natural 20 for that persuasion check. Well, the king finds that amusing and says, you know what? I'll definitely keep you in my good graces, right? Maybe they earn favor. Maybe the king says, you know, you can't be king, but I could use your help. There's something along those lines. Now, a lot of times the players won't drop it. And the thing is, is that the players don't drop it after getting that success, after getting that boon from that individual or from that boon from that nat 20 on that skill check that they never should have succeeded at. Well, they can push it in the other direction. I'm very clear on the fact of telegraphing. Listen, I found that amusing. You're now pushing your luck, right? This goes with all skill checks. But whatever you do, if you can't win a skill check and there's nothing the players can do, don't have them roll. If they do roll and they roll that natural 20, make sure there's some kind of progression. Give them something for that roll. Don't just tell them it fails because that's so disheartening. I would have rather not rolled at all. This one's controversial. How would you handle this? Stop hiding plot points behind skill checks. This is something that a lot of new dungeon masters will do. They will hide a secret door. They will hide something that needed to be found by the party as a plot point to move things forward behind a skill check. Investigation and perception are the common most two. You failed the investigation, you failed the perception check, so therefore you never found the scroll that was going to tell you how to open the door at the end of the place. And that's the only way to get through. The problem is, is when we hide progression points behind skill checks, we risk the chance of the players never encountering it. And as players, that can be very, very frustrating. If you are going to have a skill check that's needed to progress it, always have a level of hinting. I say, and I talk about dynamic DCs a lot, meaning that if I roll, you know, to find a scroll in a place, there's a 10 skill check and investigation check, and the players roll a five, they may not to find the scroll, but I will tell them, it does look like at one point in time, something used to be stored over in this general direction due to the amount of dust. You know, you're seeing like, there's less dust on this shelf than there is on this one. Okay, well, I'm going to take a closer look at that shelf. Great, this is what you find. They didn't find the thing they were looking for, but I told them a piece of information that would push them to that shelf. The players still have the ability to say, eh, it's just a shelf, and walk away. I didn't hide it behind the skill check. I gave it to them. I threw out a hook. They chose not to take the, this shelf was something, there's something wrong with the shelf. This is different than everything else. Eh, we'll be fine. That's on the players. That's not on me. And then... Hopefully, one of them will be paying attention. And if no one's paying attention, I will say, well, the only thing you can remember is there's that shelf that you didn't look at that looked like something had been stored there at one point in time. Oh, yeah, we should go do that. I will still give hints. Plot points are one of those things that I'm willing to give. And I very rarely, if they need something to progress forward and they roll a perception check, well, you don't find anything in the room except for the one plot point specific thing because it's obviously sitting on the middle of the table. So just remember that. Don't hide progression of your plots behind skill checks couple unlucky rolls and use a dungeon master are now fishing for a way to get the story back on track. And for God's sakes, do not hide MacGuffins. If the players need something that is important to the progression of the story, don't hide it. Just give it to them. Show them how to give it and telegraph it. The moment you start hiding the MacGuffin from your players or making it hard for them to get, you want to talk about frustrating to all get out. Show them the MacGuffin show them how to get it, but you can have it be a challenge between the players and the MacGuffin. Don't just hide it from them, letting them come up with ways to find it. 
I see this all too often where the players don't know what to do. They have no direction to the MacGuffin. They don't know where it's at. They know it's somewhere in this dungeon, but they have no clue where. And you hit it in the third drawer down over in the far left-hand corner of the dungeon. What happens when the players miss a room? What happens when the players don't know where to go? If you're going to have a MacGuffin in any scenario, make sure that you telegraph in some way, shape, or form where that MacGuffin is and how the players can get it. If you hide it, if you make it hidden away in a room that the players may have the option of skipping, that causes problems as well. So don't hide the MacGuffin. And if you do hide the MacGuffin, give the players direction to know where to go to find the MacGuffin. MacGuffins are important. Now, if it's just some random magic item, yeah, hide it in the third door down to the room that's over there that the players will then never know that exists. And you as a dungeon master will always know. And don't ever tell them. Don't ever tell them, oh, by the way, you missed a room in that last session that had a plus three magic greatsword. Don't do that. Because then they'll start searching every corner of every room and that will take forever. Just keep that in mind. Don't hide the MacGuffins. And if you hide the magic items, don't tell them later you hit it. Stop putting puzzles in front of players with one solution. What I mean by this is if you have a puzzle that you put in front of your party and your party doesn't start figuring it out with no hints and no solutions and they don't come up with the solution that you set forth for them, you want to watch a party turn to frustration quickly, that's good. Now, if the party wins the puzzle quickly, they feel success. Here's a solution instead. If you put a puzzle in front of a party and they come up with a viable solution that looks good, that's creative, let it be the answer. I can't tell you how many times I've had parties go, man, that was awesome. We figured that out. We got you fooled, Dungeon Master. You did. You got me. Now that I've said that, my players are going to watch this video and be like, wait a second, how many puzzles did you let us come up with the answers? More than you want to know. So a lot of times my players came up with a solution to a puzzle that I didn't even see. They failed the first couple of times and then they had a really creative idea and we had spent long enough on it. I'm like, that works. The door opens. So just remember, when you're putting puzzles in front of your players, if there's a solution that's creative they can come up with, let it happen. Let it go. Otherwise, make sure that you give them hints because an unsolvable puzzle is no fun. So guys, this was just a fun look at some things that we do as Dungeon Masters that well, there are alternatives of that can make the game more fun. So just remember, have fun with your players and don't put something in front of them or hide something that progresses the plot forward. Otherwise, guys, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, comment below on the things that you would like to see or tropes that your DM does that you wish they wouldn't do. And as always, we will see you next time.